Hi there. Um, one of the questions I get asked most of all is about the clothing and what clothing you should wear for what would be ultralight camping. The only thing you really need to concern yourself is making sure you are comfortable and comfortable enough to be uh, to be safe in all kinds of weather given the worst weather situation you can predict and that would mean uh, the coldest weather and as well as the wettest weather. Uh, I'm just going to run through what I have here and, I'm, and one of the things I do like is I like to have a baseball cap that has a simple little clip on the back of it so I can clip it off to my backpack if I get start to get uh, really warm. It's a very quick way to to cool off and then I can just be hands off like that. What I have on my top layer here is um, this is just polyester. This is a polyester shirt. Um, it's Capilene, it's Patagonia, any number of companies make them. Wool shirts are great. I like to start with a short sleeve shirt and then I will build up on top of that. I will make sure that everything I wear can fit on top and be layered over each individual layer. I don't want to have one layer in the mix that's too tight and then is constricting because that'll make me feel cold. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the pants I wear. I do most of my hiking in long pants and, and I like that uh, it, for a couple reasons. It uses less sunblock and then um, if I do have to walk off trail it's just much more comfortable to have long pants on. Now I'm going to apologize in advance what I'm about to do. I am going to show you that I do hike with a pair of running shorts underneath. And these running shorts, if I need to, I can use them as a swimsuit. I go swimming and I can also just strip off the long pants and hike in those. I do not take an extra pair of underwear. I don't take any underwear, I don't take any underwear at all. So now, inside my pack, and I'll go ahead and layer just like I normally would from the layers I want. So I have a long sleeve polyester top, and I found this one, which I really like, and it has a hood. So this eliminates the need for a balaclava. If I can have a hood, I can put this up at night and then eliminate the need to sleep in a balaclava. The next layer that would go on top of this, this is a great little unit. This is just a lightweight wind shirt. Uh, this weighs about three ounces. And um, this is a very versatile piece of gear. Uh, it, it, would, it wouldn't be good in a downpour. It is very nice in a breeze. Uh, there's for three ounces. There's a lot of insulating power in this. The next layer I would have um, would be my down coat. This down coat is very light. It's from Montbell. It weighs just a little over seven ounces, and um, doesn't have a zipper. It has snaps in order to save weight. This this is actually very thin. Um, if I was camping in uh, colder weather. Uh, right now we have beautiful fall weather. If it was getting later in the fall or if I was at higher elevation, I might want to take a thicker insulating layer. And I will refer to this as my primary insulating layer. Now, if it starts to rain, I have this layer, which I like a lot. And this is a, a, a raincoat from Dry Ducks. And this is, sometimes I call it my disposable jacket. But uh, this is a very good raincoat as well as... <laughs> a nice final layer to put over everything. I can actually take my sleeping bag in camp. This is big and baggy, and I purchased it big and baggy on purpose. I can take my sleeping bag, drape it over me like a shawl, and then wear And this big jacket goes over everything. I also have a hat. Now this hat does double duty. It is holding my sunglasses, and this, I don't have a sunglass case, I just keep it in my hat. I'll put the sunglasses here for now. And uh, just a nice wool hat, and uh, then, you know, for warmth, I have two sets of hoods. Actually, three sets of hoods. I have a hood on my on uh, my polypro layer. I have a hood on my wind shirt and a hood on this this lightweight raincoat. Uh, one of the other things I carry here, and I like to carry in the in the mountains at all time, is just a really lightweight pair of polyester gloves or lightweight pair of wool gloves. These weigh about an ounce. Um, there's nothing worse than having cold hands, and I found that just this little bit helps. I also like sleeping with them because I wake up, um, if I don't have them, I wake up with my hands tucked under my arms. And I also carry a rain skirt, which I don't have in this pack right now, but I carry just a simple pair of long underwear. And the long underwear, for most summer situations, long underwear and these nylon, uh, you know, what I would refer to as hiking pants, uh, is, is all I'll need. If the hiking pants get wet, I can sleep in the long underwear. If it's cold in the morning, 
I can hike in both the long underwear and the, uh, the uh, hiking pants. And um, if it's raining, I'll just let my hiking pants get wet. I would have a rain skirt on, and uh, it'll keep them fairly dry, and then I would just take them off, and I would not sleep with wet, with wet pants. Here, let me show you my shoes. Let me talk about my shoes. First, let me get rid of some layers. Um, if you look closely, these are just running shoes or lightweight hikers. They're mostly nylon, and what I do have here, these are referred to as uh, shorty gaiters, very simple gaiters. These are made of spandex, and they're made by a little cottage industry made by a woman who sews them herself on a sewing machine, and they're called Dirty Girl Gaiters, and uh, that's easy to look up on the internet. Um, just make sure to put gaiters at the end of that. You don't want to Google Dirty Girl. And they're just a very simple Velcro and a tiny little hook on the toe. And uh, I always lace my shoes loose enough so I can get them on and off, just like this. If I do everything right, I just lace my shoes up at the beginning of a hiking trip. Maybe I'll go for a week without ever tightening them up. Sometimes walking downhill, I like to tighten them up. And then I have a very, very thin pair of shorty, short uh, running socks. These are the kind of socks a marathon runner would use. And if I needed to, there's some key areas I would rub with Hydropel. So that little system, and I take an, uh, as minimal pairs of socks as I can. I take one sleeping sock, and then I take a, what I refer to as an extra sock that would be dry, so I can change in and out of these if I need to. For the most part, if I can rinse these out a little bit during the day, um, these are going to get wet. I'm going to go ahead and go through wet stream crossings. I find the short, thin socks dry much quicker than, than thick wool socks. If I needed to add any layer to the system, uh, for instance, if I was worried about being cold, I would want to make I would want to add the the lightest option I could, and usually that would just mean a long sleeve, uh, long underwear top. I would add to the whole system, and I find that uh, even if you wear double, like one on top of each other, it it is extremely warm and very efficient and extremely lightweight to just add one extra layer if you're going to take something else. And for almost all my camping, you're, this is this is what I camp with in the summertime and into the uh, shoulder seasons, the spring and fall. There you have it. I'll see you in the mountains. Now, I've got one more little tip for this video. And this is a tip I like and I use it all the time. I'm going to change my layer my upper layer anyway, while I keep on hiking. I'm not really even going to break stride. Uh, here's me, and I'm going to pop off my one shoulder of my backpack, and then I'm going to pull one arm out of my orange windshirt here, and then before I do anything else, I'm going to switch the backpack over to my other shoulder. I'm going to do it bike messenger style, and this will make the final part of this whole thing a little easier. Pull that other arm out, pull it over my head nice and quick so I don't trip, and then I stuff it back in the backpack. This is a lot easier than it looks, and it's something you can get good at. And it just makes uh, creates a little more efficiency when you're hiking. Now, I just want to add here in summation, I really hope you get to use these tips out there in the mountains, and uh, I hope you read the book. Now, maybe I sound like a weirdo zealot, but there are some real deal benefits to the ultralight backpack, and I believe in it.